of the present administration is not on land grants, but on providing jobs and livelihood projects for the urban poor sector. For that to us, the city government already has 20 urban poor relocation sites. The city government is now concentrating on providing livelihood projects for occupants of the relocation sites. The urban poor sector prioridad pa po kang Roku administration. In fact, hindi pong ginigibo may integrated livelihood master plan para po ninyo sa urban poor. Nga nang matakbalan po sila ng suporta sa pagbuhay, kaya po naghihingawa po ang Roku administration na tapuson inyong integrated livelihood master plan tulos-tulos as in ma-implementa po si mga major projects for the urban poor sector. And that's the latest in Naga City. I'm Elmer Casales in Bicol Region. Thousands of squatter families in Antipolo may lose their homes any time this week after the A Corporation claiming their lands plans to continue demolitions in the area. The residents and their council, Eduardo Bringas, points out there were no notices given them before the demolition which began last June 28. They are the cases still pending at the Court of Appeals after a temporary restraining order against the demolition lapsed last May. Attorney Bringas adds some of their evidence point to the possibility of government officials conniving with officials of the Fairground Development Corporation and over the weekend, Senator Robert Jaworski, represented by his chief of staff and son, Dodot uh, Jaworski, distributed relief items and gave medical care to more than 4,000 families in the area. The government committee has looked into the matter. Uh, they have uh, come out with their own recommendations, you know, stating that uh, there are certain people in the LRA at fault. If we are able to prove that he's not an owner, and we are able to prove that uh, uh, there are government officials involved, and we are able to prove that this property belongs to the government, and the, the worth of this property is more than 50 million, then it would be the crime of plunder, which is under RIA 7659, is punishable by death. Long lines to the U.S. Embassy may no longer be a nightmare to Filipinos planning to travel to the United States. Visa applications to the U.S. Embassy will now be done by appointment. Manila Mayor Lito Atienza says he has talked with U.S. Ambassador to the Philippines, Thomas Hubbard, who informed him that the Embassy will install 2,000 telephone lines for such appointments. The Embassy will also construct waiting and reception rooms inside the Embassy for the applicants. A peek at the equities and currencies markets with Kim Bernardo when we come back. To examine the issues that affect the Filipino nation. If it acceded to every senator's wish to put up their dream office, the government would have run out of money. To the most comprehensive documentation and research. All male, all squatter, all tattooed, all with criminal records, now closed books. As analyzed by veteran print and broadcast journalist Teddy Loxin. We must live with liquidation. Why can't the cops liquidate abusive officials first? To prescribe the most sensible solutions. Assignment. Because broadcast journalism has an obligation. At the stock market, Manila shares finished slightly higher amid mixed sentiment in a cautious market that waits for more clearer signals on the trend of the peso. The second and third liners continued to dominate trades today, though some blue chips issues like Naralco and Telephone helped lifted the physics. Well, analysts say that the market is still driven by liquidity and coming from mostly local players. PSE Governor Joey Rojas, who is also the president of Eagle Equity, says consolidation is still in place, but there are still a few games to be made. The 33 share composite ended slightly higher today by 11.5 points to close at 2606.21. The commercial industrial sectors were likewise higher by 0.73%, while the properties dipped by 1.23%. The mining and the oil sectors both emerged as big winners today, mining sector with a gain of 4.56%, the oil sector with a whopping gain of 18.08%. The bank's central national services sector also pulled back slightly by 0.36%, while the broader barometer 
Barometer All Shares Index was up by 0.23% to 852.82. Meantime, the total volume of shares this morning reaching about 4.82 billion total peso equivalent at 3.06 billion pesos. And it was a mixed sentiment with the decliners overshadowing advancers only by one margin. And we've got 62 decliners, 61 advancers, 58 unchanged issues for a total of 181 issues traded. And this time, a look at the Asian markets this morning. Well, most markets opening the week with gains, taking their inspiration from the Dow's light gains last Friday. But the mood was relatively quiet with little news to perk up the Asian markets. Well, Japanese shares up led by Sony Corporation and Fujitsu Limited on expectations they will benefit from the economic growth in the U.S. and from the Bank of Japan's policy of curbing any strengthening of the yen. While in Hong Kong, the shares now down for a fourth day, though the market there opened in the positive territory. But concerns that more companies will sell shares may dilute earnings for shares still hangs in the air. Yesterday, Chung Kong Holdings Limited denying speculation that companies controlled by billionaire Li ka Shing plan to sell shares. And now checking how much the peso is worth in morning deals. Well, the peso was a touch firmer in early Monday trades and getting a respite from last week's fairly dramatic slide. The recovery in the peso came after the Banco Central said it was not dropping its key overnight rates this week. The peso had fallen to a three-month low since Wednesday due to speculation that the BSP would further cut key overnight rates. Well, the bank had reduced rates 20 times this year for a total of 437.5 basis points, prompting yield hungry offshore players to take their profits on their peso investments and place their money elsewhere. And at the Philippine dealing system, the peso opening stronger at 38.46 from Friday's close of 38.51. It hit a morning high of 38.56 while its lowest seen at 38.50. And finally, a look at the Asian currencies this morning. Well, the regionals were narrowly mixed in quiet business with few factors emerging over the weekend to sway the sentiment. The regional stock markets were being closely watched after their recent strong rallies with technical indicators pointing to a major overbought condition in some of the regional stock markets for quite some time. In Tokyo trades, the dollar held steady near a six-week high against the yen for a fifth trading day and still on speculations or expectations that Japan and will sell its own currency to protect its economic recovery. In general, movements in the regional currencies were small, although the Indonesian rupiah managed to pick up towards that elusive 6,500 level. And that's a wrap of the equities and the currencies markets in and around Asia. From the SNN Business Center, I'm Kim Bernardo. Thank you, Kim. Reforms in the power and banking industries form part of Congress's special session. Three bills on the power sector will be ready for deliberations. The bill would break up and privatize the National Power Corporation monopoly and reorganize the Energy Department and the Energy Regulatory Board. The three bills were approved by the Senate Energy Committee just last week, but the House Committee has not done the same. Amendments of the General Banking Act are also on the agenda. House sources doubt the bank reforms will be passed by weekend, however. Extending instead into the regular session that starts at the end of the month. Now, there's also an anti-dumping measure that has already been made